Israel Today ran this amazing headline story. Rabbi reveals the name of the Messiah. Rabbi Itzhak Kaduri was famously known for his memorization of the Bible, the Talmud, and other Jewish writings. He was a teacher and a revered master at Nahalat Yitzhak Yeshiva Seminary. He knew Jewish sages and celebrities of the last century and rabbis who lived in the Holy Land who kept the faith alive before the state of Israel was even born. Kaduri was not only highly esteemed because of his age of 108, but he was charismatic and wise. Chief rabbis looked up to him as a righteous man. Thousands visited him to ask for counsel or healing. His followers speak of many miracles, and his students say that he was a prophet of many disasters. A few months before Kaduri died at the age of 108, he surprised his followers when he told them that he had personally met the Messiah. The Messiah had appeared to him. He wrote the name of the Messiah in a note, he said. His official website had mentioned the Messiah note. David Kaduri, the rabbi's 80-year-old son, confirmed that in his last year, his father had talked and dreamed almost exclusively about the Messiah and his coming. My father has met the Messiah in a vision, he said, and he told us that he was coming very soon. Kaduri gave a message in his synagogue on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, teaching how to recognize the Messiah. He also mentioned that the Messiah would appear to Israel after Ariel Sharon passed. When Kaduri died, January the 28th, 2006, more than 200,000 people joined the funeral procession on the streets of Jerusalem to pay their respects as he was taken to his final resting place. Shortly before he died, this teacher of Israel wrote the name of the Messiah on a small note which he requested would remain sealed for one year. One year later, the note was opened in 2007. When the note was opened, it read as follows. Concerning the letter abbreviation of the Messiah's name, he will lift the people and prove that his word and law are valid. The Hebrew sentence with the hidden name of the Messiah reads like this. The acronym of that sentence, that is the letter abbreviation that Kaduri spoke of, or the first initials of each word, spell the Hebrew name of Jesus, or Yehoshua, or Yeshua, the Hebrew root word of salvation. When the name of Yehoshua appeared in Kaduri's message, ultra-Orthodox Jews from his seminary in Jerusalem argued that their master must not have left the exact solution for decoding the Messiah's name. The revelation received scant coverage in the Israeli media. Only the Hebrew websites News First Class and Kaduri.net mentioned the Messiah's note, both of them insisting that it was authentic. Israel Today spoke to two of Kaduri's followers in Jerusalem who admitted that the note was authentic, but very confusing for his followers as well. We have no idea how the rabbi got to this name of the Messiah, one of them said. I know this. The answer of the identity of the Messiah as Jesus, given to Kaduri supposedly, is absolute truth. As such, I believe it had to have been revealed from Jesus himself appearing to Kaduri, much the same. The new government is setting out on its journey today in the middle of Israel's 75th year. In the first 25 years of the state, the foundations were set in all airs. We absorbed a huge amount of immigration, and we fought difficult wars forced upon us by our enemies. In the next 25 years, we saw a foundational and pivotal political upheaval, and we signed peace agreements with previous enemies. In the next 25 years, we accelerated the transition to a free economy, and I am proud of the privilege I had to lead reforms in this area. We made Israel a technological and an innovational powerhouse, and we signed four historic peace agreements with Arab countries. Thank <laughs> you.
We now look forward to the next 25 years, which will bring us to Israel's centenary. In the next four years, we will work so that when we celebrate Israel's 100th anniversary, Israel will be a world powerhouse that flourishes and is strong, whose existence will no longer be cast in doubt. For that reason, we must carry out three important tasks. The first, to frustrate Iran's ability to develop a nuclear arsenal that will threaten us and the entire world. Opposition members are calling out weak in unison. We will ensure Israel's military superiority by continual strengthening. The first task is to make sure that Iran does not destroy us with an atom bomb. And you are taking that lightly, as if that is a small thing. Thank you very much. The members of the new coalition are applauding. You who supported the nuclear agreement, why don't you listen? You may learn something. Who are you to mock us? What are you talking about? The second task is to develop Israel's infrastructures, including, and listen well, you may laugh, but remember what I am saying today, to develop a bullet train that will travel hundreds of kilometers an hour that will connect the country from the very north to the very south. We want to do away with the periphery and cause every area of Israel to flourish. The third task is to continue to expand the circle of peace with Arab countries in order to put an end to the Israeli-Arab conflict. These are the three meta goals of our country and our government, and we will not make do with that. The new government will also address other crucial areas to restore quiet and personal security and governability to the state of Israel. In my book, I said there are four peace treaties to be had right away. If we pursue them, we waited until the fourth year and happily achieved these four historic peace accords, the Abraham Accords. But uh, I think the big prize is peace with Saudi Arabia, which I intend to achieve if I go back into office. And I think there's a chance I will achieve it because I think Saudi Arabia and many of the other Arab countries who haven't yet made peace with us know that I'm absolutely committed to preventing Iran from having nuclear weapons, which is uh, something that they are keenly interested in. Uh, and uh, so I think there's a correlation between the rise of Iran and the rise of Israel. The rise of Israeli power facilitated the Abraham Accords, and the continual uh, nurturing of Israeli power will also uh, nurture, I think, a broader peace with Saudi Arabia and uh, nearly all of the rest of the Arab world. I intend to bring the Arab-Israeli conflict to a close.